Hello friends, uh, let's discuss a clinical case. Now this case can be asked as an MCQ at first prof level, it may not be for 10 marks, uh, but certainly at the PG entrance level this can be asked. Uh, so the case is this, a 10 year old boy comes with uh, complaints of excessive tiredness, weakness, loss of appetite and breathlessness on exertion. Upon examination, pallor is a plus plus, but uh, there is no icterus. And uh, lab investigation, now there starts the interesting part. Uh, hemoglobin 8.5 grams per cent, packed cell volume 32 per cent, uh, MCV 60 cubic microns, color index 0 0.7 and HbA1c was 8.5 per cent. Now, for whatever reason, because the boy was feeling uh, tiredness and loss of appetite, etc. So, glycated hemoglobin was done, it was 8.5 percent. Random blood sugar was done, which was 160 milligram percent. No family history of diabetes mellitus or hereditary spherocytosis. So, uh, the question is, which of the following would be the best course of action uh, in this particular case? Uh, would you like to answer this right now? Okay, think about it. These are the options. Start insulin or start oral iron and perform OGTT, oral glucose tolerance test uh, later maybe or wait and watch and repeat all investigations little later or start oral antidiabetic and injection B12. So, uh, if you have still uh, figured out what is the case about and answering the question. Okay, anyways, I'll break the suspense. It is uh, start oral iron and perform the oral glucose tolerance test if required later. Let's see why it is uh, so. I mean, why that's the best course of action. Look at the options one by one and uh, rule them out. Start insulin. Well, because he is a 10 year old boy and with high level of glycated uh, hemoglobin and with the symptoms of tiredness and loss of appetite etc. There were pointers towards uh, diabetes and since he is a 10 year old boy, it is likely to be uh, uh, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus or type 1 diabetes mellitus which is insulin dependent. Uh, to add to the twist, they have given no family history. Uh, of uh, diabetes mellitus. So, uh, it is little confusing. But anyways, can you start insulin straight away just on the basis of these symptoms and a high reading of glycated hemoglobin? The answer is no, of course not. Uh, I will talk about it in de detail as we discuss the case further. But at the first instance, you should not straight away start with the insulin have a proper glucose tolerance test, have a proper uh, blood sugar uh, level of fasting and postprandial, have glycated hemoglobin which is already done and it's high. Uh, but still, that wouldn't be the first, uh, first line of uh, your thinking. And I'll discuss about it little later again, once again. Wait and watch and repeat the investigations later. Why wait and watch? Uh, wait and watch? Already the uh, hemoglobin is 8, which is uh, indicative of anemia, obviously, and uh, therefore, why to wait? He has got symptoms, you have to start the treatment. So, you have to start the treatment at least for anemia, and therefore, this option is also ruled out. Uh, start oral antidiabetic uh, and injection B12. Now, uh, there are no pointers towards megaloblastic anemia. From the PCV and from the other blood reports, there is no uh, possibility of megaloblastic anemia because you can see MCV and uh, other indices, they are not pointing towards vitamin B12 deficiency. So, uh, starting B12 uh, may not be fruitful. Plus, start oral antidiabetic. Look, uh, this if this is at all and insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, looking at the age, uh, etc. Uh, still, oral 
एंटी डायबिटिक और ओरल हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक एजेंट्स वोट बी यूजफुल इफ इट्स एब्सोलूट इंसुलिन डेफिशियंसी सो देर फोर इवन दिस इज रूल्ड आउट एंड देर फोर बेस्ट दैट वी हैव इज द ऑप्शन बी दैट इज स्टार्ट ओरल आयन एंड परफॉर्म द ओरल ग्लूकोज टॉलर स्टेंस लिटिल लेटर और मे बी अदर टेस्ट फॉर ब्लड शुगर लेट्स डिस्कस इट इन लिटिल मोर डिटेल नाउ स्टार्टिंग विथ the blood profile blood picture hemoglobin is 8.5 grams per cent okay now before i go any further uh, look age given in any clinical case always matters because it gives you certain pointers so never uh, ignore the age given of the patient in this case a 10 year old boy fine and the second point is you have to always know the normal ranges given Uh, for uh, each of the parameter so in this case hemoglobin 8.5 grams per cent and uh, you know below 10 is anemia 10 to 8 is mild anemia uh, 8 to 6 is moderate anemia 8 to 6 grams per cent of hemoglobin and below 5 grams per cent is severe anemia so here this falls in the category of mild anemia clinical classification mild anemia and therefore we have to start the treatment for anemia as there are symptoms uh, indicating towards mild anemia now what type of anemia could it be they have said there is no family history of hereditary spherocytosis it would result in excessive hemolysis uh, if if at all uh, if we suspect that and hemolytic anemia was a possibility but family history of uh, spherocytosis ruled out and look at the other uh, parameters packed cell volume 32% what's the normal range 38 to 45% so pcv is reduced mcv mean corpuscular volume is 60 cubic microns given over here and uh, what is the normal range 78 to 94 cubic microns that means this is certainly microcytes these are microcytes small sized rbcs that means this is microcytic anemia and color index given is 0.7 the normal range is 0.8 to 1 and below 0.8 it is hypochromia so this is definitely now from these uh, parameters it's a microcytic hypochromic anemia that's established microcytic hypochromic anemia mild anemia and this uh, is likely to be iron deficiency obviously because uh, iron deficiency anemia results in uh, microcytic hypochromic type of anemia less of iron less of hemoglobin inside the rbcs that's the result and therefore uh, the treatment that you should start you know uh, mild anemia oral iron is given moderate anemia injectable iron is given it was there in the option start injectable iron but uh, there is no need at this stage you can start the oral iron now coming to the interesting part of the story why is it not possible that the boy has concurrently along with anemia also uh, diabetes insulin dependent diabetes mellitus well no there is no possibility uh of that let's see why well there is a possibility there is a faint chance but not just based on one single finding and that is high hb uh, high glycated hemoglobin which is 8.5% given why is that let's see first of all they have given the value of hba1c as 8.5% so you got to know what is the normal value now first of all this is called as glycated hemoglobin and uh, many people also call it glycosylated hemoglobin is that the same uh, both terms are synonymous no uh, there is a difference between these two terms glycated or glycation reaction is a spontaneous reaction it's a non enzymic reaction it occurs spontaneously 
whereas uh, glycosylated reaction glycosylation reaction uh, is an enzymatic reaction so that's a it's a controlled reaction it's an enzymatic reaction not spontaneous reaction like glycation so glycation reaction occurs with the hemoglobin glycosylation which is uh, in which the enzymes are involved this occurs with the proteins inside the cells uh, if, in the presence of enzymes that's where you call it glycosylation reactions but with hemoglobin it's a glycation reaction so we call it glycated hemoglobin rather than calling it glycosylated hemoglobin that's the correct way of describing it well, what is glycation or glycosylation anyways there is plasma glucose uh, whether normal level or high level but glucose is always present in the plasma now this glucose when it is uh, consistently high then it will enter the cells and will bind with the proteins and when the, it's called as a glycosylation reactions and then the reaction will move towards formation of the AGEs, advanced glycation end products. So, uh, uh, it's glycosylation reaction when it is entering the cells and binding with the proteins. But, uh, what about hemoglobin? Look, in the blood, there is plasma and plasma uh, uh, has glucose. This glucose can diffuse into the RBCs, it enters the RBCs and can bind with the hemoglobin forming that glycation reaction. So, uh, it's called as a glycated hemoglobin. Even under normal plasma glucose levels, certain amount of hemoglobin does get glycated. It's a spontaneous reaction, so certain percent of hemoglobin is going to be glycated. How much? And how do you describe it? Well, uh, let's say 5 to 6 percent hemoglobin normally, even under normal levels of plasma glucose, it does get glycated, it becomes glycated hemoglobin. Uh, what is the meaning of this 5 to 6 percent? It means whatever number of RBCs are present in an individual. And whatever amount of hemoglobin is present inside those RBCs, about 5-6% hemoglobin has got glycated. You know, uh, glycosylation reactions, this alter the structures uh, of the proteins eventually. Here, even in the case of hemoglobin, there is some influence on its oxygen transport ability. But it does happen, not entirely uh, useless, it makes the hemoglobin. Uh, but yes. Whatever RBCs are there and whatever hemoglobin present in, the, in those RBCs, about 6% of the hemoglobin has become glycated. This is the normal range. Let's say up to 6.4% hemoglobin has become glycated. Now, uh, let's understand this glycation of hemoglobin. You must have heard that... Uh, Glycated hemoglobin levels, they indicate plasma glucose control over the past 2-3 months. Why is that? Why over the past 2-3 months plasma glucose? I will tell you why. Because it is related to the lifespan of the RBCs. Hemoglobin is present inside the RBCs and RBCs have a certain lifespan. So, consider this. RBCs are being formed in the bone marrow, they are being released into the circulation and then uh, where they are going to get exposed to the plasma glucose. But it does not, this reaction does not start instantly. As the RBC becomes little older, then this glycation reaction happens. So, older an RBC, more likely that the hemoglobin inside that RBC is likely to be glycated. So, imagine this lifespan, entire lifespan of the RBC is uh, 120 days, that is 4 months. And if we are assuming that uh, uh, as soon as it is formed, the glycation will not start. As the RBC grows little older, uh, it will become, the hemoglobin inside it will become glycated. That is what uh, we are saying. And therefore, the plasma glucose levels 
over the last two three months of an individual suppose you uh, uh, take this test of uh, glycated hemoglobin it will show you the plasma glucose levels over the past two three months why because whatever rbcs were produced four months ago and then uh, their life last two three months of their life uh, some of the hemoglobin has got glycated and it is now being shown in your report so that's how it happens uh, now that being said and yes one more point to be added is that if the plasma glucose is higher consistently high plasma glucose will cause what consistently high glucose exposure to the rbcs and the hemoglobin and therefore the glycated hemoglobin percent will increase so when it means glycated hemoglobin is 8% or 9% it is telling you that your plasma glucose has been high over the last 2 3 months and therefore more and more glucose got involved in this glycation reaction with the hemoglobin now coming to the most interesting part we have established that this boy has iron deficiency anemia so uh, what happens in the how do you read high glycated hemoglobin in this person in this patient the answer is it is likely to be a falsely high glycated hemoglobin why it's because iron deficiency anemia uh, when this is the condition uh, bone marrow is not producing the rbcs at a normal rate uh, number of uh, rbc production or the rate of rbc production is slower in the case of iron deficiency it means what it means at any given point of time you are likely to encounter more number of older rbcs in the circulation because newer rbcs are not coming into the circulation at a normal rate therefore there will be, will be greater percentage of older rbcs uh, in the circulation and a greater percentage of older rbcs compared to any other normal individual and it means what we have already said that if there are older more older rbcs in the circulation uh, and uh, as the rbc grows older there are glycation reactions anyways i mean it also occurs normally the glycation reaction therefore you are likely to get a higher glycated hemoglobin percentage just because you are getting more percentage of older rbcs in the circulation in iron deficiency anemia therefore uh, relatively you are getting more uh, hemoglobin which has got glycated this is a relative uh, in relative terms and therefore uh, it would be a falsely high glycated hemoglobin level uh, in this particular individual uh, and therefore uh, the, the answer was you start with the oral iron and maybe if you suspect diabetes mellitus anyways you can repeat the investigations later but always keep this particular possibility in mind iron deficiency anemia is likely to give a falsely high glycated hemoglobin so that was the answer uh, while i sign off i'll just ask you a question if iron deficiency anemia will give you falsely high glycated hemoglobin percentage then what do you think will happen in the condition of hemolytic anemias in the case of hemolytic anemias uh, what will happen to the glycated hemoglobin levels uh, you can write it in the uh, comment section thank you